All right, show one, show one. Giving all praises and honor and glory that's due to your how about Shimmy Shai, by Shem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone who will will. Peace, blessings, and salutations go to the whole for let that scatter abroad. All right, to you brothers out there pushing the truth with our righteousness and sincerity, and to the Aqua, the Feast Sisters that are listening and learning. To you, I say, Sean Wong. All right, coming back at you with another lesson through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh, by Shem Yashai, and go with and edify and the faith and the lapse in Yahweh, by Shem Yashai, through the Spirit, Rikakadash, the Holy Spirit. I praise and let's be edified and straight to the point. All right, we're going to jump right into it, man. All right, so this is a. Uh, an article from prophecynewswatch.com it says why are so many bad things happening to america in 2022 and i can tell you why all right and the prophets can tell you why because judgment is going forth man all right judgment is going forth in this place man all right and look at this place man full of wickedness all right it's full of all manners of abominations all right all kind of manners of wickedness is going on in this place man Okay, and I actually got another article I'm gonna show. All right, where uh, let me just let's just go on and get it. All right, let me show you. But let me go back to it though. All right, come back to this. All right, this is why judgment is going forth, man. All right, all right, because of these things that's going on. All right, and you see that it says transformer ideology. God is dead. We are our own gods. And that's how these people feel, man. All right? Hey, these people don't believe in the most high how about Shemi Shah. These people don't believe that there's a God. All right? So, hey, this we're living in a godless nation, man. Okay? And that's why the glory how about Shemi Shah is jacking this place up. All right? I'll come back to this article. Let's go back to this one. All right? And we're going to read a key point in here. All right? It says, have you ever wondered why... We just keep getting hit by one thing after another. I grew up during a time when it seemed like America was endlessly blessed. But now everything around us seems the opposite of blessed. And hey, this place is not blessed, man. This place is cursed. Babylon, the great America, is cursed, man. And as a matter of fact, let me, get to, let me go to a scripture. All right. I'm going to come back. All right. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 51. And verse, yeah, let's let's read verse 7 and 8 and 9. All right, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7 and 8 and 9. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord in high by Shinyashah's hands that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. All right, the nations are mad and drunken off of the wine of Babylon, the great America. The philosophies, the wickedness that comes out of this place, man. And wickedness has spread throughout the four corners of the earth due, due to this place, man. And that's why the glory of Shin Yashai is now bringing judgment upon Babylon the Great America. Okay? Verse 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bomb for her pain and so she may be healed. This place will not be healed, man. This place cannot be healed. Alright? Let's read on. Verse 9. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go everyone into his own country. That's why people want to flee and get the hell out of here. Because they know judgment is about to come up on Babylon the Great America. Okay? For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Okay? Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down to verse verse 25. Alright, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25. Then we're going to go back to the article. Behold, I am against the old destroying mountain. This is talking about Babylon, the great America, man. Okay. All right. Said the Lord, how about she on shy, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt offering. This place is about to become. All right. This place is. Hey, it's being made for taking, man. All right. All right. This place is about to become <laughs> missile food. All right. All of this place. All of America, Babylon the Great, man. This place is just missile food ready to be taken, man. And these nations are already gathered up for World War III to, hey, to take this place on out, man. All right? The Mycenaean nuclear missiles are going to take this place out, man. Okay? All right? So let's get back to the article. We're going to get some more precepts. Okay? Let's read. Let's read a little bit more. It says, Our economy is imploding. Inflation is out of control. 
The housing market is starting to crash. Our weather patterns have gone completely nuts. All right, hey, that's true. And like, like I said, the Lord shall visit thee. The Lord is visiting the world which he made, especially here in Babylon, the great America. The eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon the sinful kingdom. All right? But that scripture goes twofold. You, that goes to you Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Americans, mainly two-thirds. But you can also compare this to America, man, because this place is a sinful kingdom. All right? The most wickedest place on earth, man. All right? The western half of the nations is enduring the worst droughts in two, 1,200 years. We are dealing with three major pandemics, six uh, stimulations, uh, whatever that word is. We are losing our proxy war with Russia and Ukraine, and it looks like war with China is just around the corner. Exactly, man. And hey. Russia, China, and all these other nations are going to join together and to do what? <laughs> to wipe this place out, man. Okay? Babylon, the great America. Okay? Uh, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. And on top of everything else, our political system is failing. F failing because liberals and conservatives deeply, deeply hate one another. Exactly. That's a house divided. And as a matter of fact, let's get this scripture, man. All right? Let's get that, because, hey, <laughs> this place is truly divided, man, all right? That's a house divided, all right? Let's go to Mark 23, it's like Mark chapter 3, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read verse 23 through 26, all right? Mark chapter 3, verse 23. And he called to them, unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? Verse 24. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand, all right? Hey, Esau Edom's kingdom cannot stand, okay? This place will not be able to stand, all right? Let's read this again, verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. I think I read uh, verse 25 over 24. It's you. Verse 25, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. The house of Esau, the race of Esau, all right? Esau Edom, the so-called white man, okay? Hey. This place cannot stand, man. This place got an end. Let's read on. Verse 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. And hey, Esau, Edom is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, man. Okay? So, hey, this place, all right, this place is about to go up in smokes, man. And these nations are gathered together, all right? They're being gathered together to do what? They're going to burn this place with fire. With them ICBM nuclear missiles, all right? Let's get that. This is Revelation chapter 7 and verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, all right, that's the EU and NATO nations, these shall hate the whore, America, Babylon the Great, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This place is going to be utterly burned with fire, all right? ICBM nuclear missiles in one hour, man. All it's going to take, one hour. For this place to be burnt up, man. Okay? One hour. Like it tells you in Revelations the 18th chapter. The next of the next chapter. Okay? Excuse me. Verse 8. It's like verse 17. For Yahweh have put in their hearts to fulfill his will. Alright? Their minds. He's putting in these nations' minds to fulfill his will. To destroy Babylon the Great America, man. Okay? And to agree and give their king. king like, and get their kingdoms unto the beast until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. Verse 18, and the woman which thou sawest is the great, is that great city which reign, reigneth over the kings of the earth. And this place rule over the kings of the earth, man. Over all nations. Alright? And hey, people are just fed up and just tired of America and it's bullshit, man. Okay? So let's go back to the article. See anything else I got in here. Oh, I forgot to read the rest of this. It said, and if you think that there is hope on the horizon, you are going to be severely disappointed. And there's no hope for this place, man. Like we read in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 8 and 9. Like it says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. This place cannot be healed, man. This place won't be healed. There ain't no good times coming. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I got another precept. 
All right, let's go to Isaiah. Stop you. Isaiah chapter 24 and let's see. Mm, I'll start at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 8. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. Verse 9. They shall not drink wine which a strong snog with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Verse 10, the point. The city of confusion is broken down. The city of confusion started by Babylon the Great America. Why do you think Genesis wrote that song in 1986? The land of confusion. Who do you think they were talking about? America, man. Because this is the land of confusion. Okay? This is the land of confusion, man. All right? And hey. This, everything that comes out of this place is nothing but wickedness, man. All right? Nothing but wickedness that comes out of Babylon, the great America. Okay? And hey, glory how about Shin Yashai is fed up with this place, man. Okay? Verse 10. The city. Yeah, let's read it. Verse 10 again. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Verse 11. There is a crime for wine in the streets. The truth. Okay? All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The mirth of this place is gone. Okay? There's no more joy in this place, man. All right? All those happy days, the happy days, and all the good times that you <laughs> you so-called Americans had, all of that's coming to an end, man. The mirth of this place is, hey, it's about to go. It's already gone. Like I say, the thrill is gone, man. All right? <laughs> that's one of B.B. King's songs, man. And hey, the thrill of this place is gone. There's no more thrill. Never was anyway. All right. Let's see. Anything that's here. Mm, you know what? Let me read a little bit more. It says the current current crop of politicians in Washington is the worst that we have ever what's not that we have had in our entire history, and all of the solutions they give us just seems to make matters even worse. <laughs> Exactly, and it's gonna get even worse than this. Okay, let's read on. Verse so like this weekend, I came across a very intriguing article in the Jerusalem Post entitled "Is God Punishing the United States of America?" And that, uh, yes, He is. All right, He is punishing. Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is punishing this place. All right, well, you know what? Let's get a stretcher, man. Okay, all right, let's go. It is scripture. Let's go to Amos 9 and verse 8. I quoted this scripture earlier. All right. Amos chapter 9 and verse 8. Behold, snuck, behold the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, and Yahshai, are upon the sinful kingdom. All right. This is talking about America. You can apply this to America. All right. This is talking about Israel. All right. Back in the past, you can apply this to Israel today because two thirds of our people are back now and they're not doing the same old wicked shit that they did in the past. Like, all right, and hey, the glory of Hashem is about to judge two thirds of his people. All right, but he's also about to judge this sinful kingdom, man. All right, this wicked ass demonic kingdom. All right, full of abominations, the alphabet lifestyle, women over the men, etc. Do as thy will attitude, all right? Hey, the Lord Yahweh Shin is about to bring a lot of judgment upon this place, man. Judgment is about to go forth. Amos 9 and verse 8 again. Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh Shin Yashai's power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from out the face of the earth. The Lord Yahweh Shin Yashai is going to literally destroy this place. There's not going to be nothing left of Babylon, the great America, when this place gets hit with over 200 million missiles, man. And, of course, laser beam chariot fire from the chariots of the Lord Yahweh by Shin Yashai. Okay? Saving, I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord Yahweh by Shin Yashai. So the Lord has preserved a remnant, man. Okay? He has preserved a remnant that's going to be saved in these times. Okay? All right? Let's go back. Let's go back to the article. All right? Let's see anything else in here. Mm, let's see. Well, there's a little more in here. I can read. Let's read down here. It says, Politically, whether people want to admit it or not, 
the country is in the midst of a civil war. Exactly. And hey, civil war is going to soon break out when all hell breaks loose, man. It's, hey, Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Daniel 7 1. We read in Mark chapter 3, verse 23 to 26. It says, A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. All right. And as a matter of fact, if you uh, read verse 24, uh, uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 24. And uh, NLT, it says that a kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. This place is on the verge of collapsing, man. All right? These people are truly divided. The house of Esau, Edom. Okay? The house, the race of Esau. Okay? This place is truly divided. Okay? Thought for a moment, not one where both sides have taken up arms one against the other, although... That too could even could even event evenate. All right. Sadly, he's right on target. Hey, hey, this place, this place is on its way out, man. All right. And that's enough of that one. All right. I put this article in the description box. You can read it. All right. But let's go to the let's go back to the other article that I just showed right here. Okay. All right. Because hey, there's a reason why. And Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is just in this place, man. Because, hey, these people here, <laughs> they say they want to be their own God. They say the Lord is dead, all right? That's the attitude of most of these people here in Babylon, the great America. Including the monster two-thirds, man. Okay, let's read a little bit of this. All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a little bit. It says, an Australian woman who identifies as male, 12 years old, bullshit, still a female, by the way. But nevertheless, has sued the psychiatrist who placed her on testosterone at one visit and later signed off on surgery to mutilate her body to be more like a man's. And I'm telling you, man, wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Another specialist had recommended she obtain a through. A throughout psych psychiatric work up because it's not before embracing on hormone treatment. It says the woman now regrets her gender transition and argues the psychiatric act irres irresponsibly by intentionally irrelevant ir ir irreversible procedures. So hastily, sadly, it's too late. <laughs> and now you people, hey, that's what you get for following the ways of the fucking wicked, man. All right? And this could be Edomite anyway, so we don't really care. But we do got some nice that scattered amongst the heathen. All right? But hey, a lot of folks feel this way now. All right? And this is what you get for following after the ways of the wicked, man. When you follow after the ways of the wicked, hey, you get what you deserve. All right? <laughs> Nobody feel bad. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna get to a point in here. Um, I really don't want to read all of this. Yeah, let's read down here. It says that distinction, when applies to human beings in particular, becomes: Does my body have any authority over my identity, or is it simply a piece of stuff? Our answer reveals that we believe about, about, about the origins and purpose of humanity. Are human beings made in the image of Yahweh? Yes, you are. All right, the Bible tells you that. All right, the Lord said he made man in his image. Okay, all right. Or are we simply exalt, exact anim, exalt animals? All right, you not know, we come from no damn human. No damn animal, all right? That's that damn, uh, what's that shit you call it? Evolution shit. That evolution madness bullshit that you've been taught, all right? Trying to take uh, the glory how about Shin Yasha out of the creation, all right? The glory how about Shin Yasha created the heavens and the earth and the people, man, all right? Point blank, period, man, all right? He made one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor, all right? The righteous who is Jacob and the Wicked, who is Esau, even the so-called white man, all right, the Edomites. Truman continues, and therefore, is it, it 
It's like, is it legitimate to transcend ourselves using our techno technological skills? Or are or are there limits intrinsic to us or perhaps we might say imposed upon us from our from without? Alright. Says right here. Yeah. Let's read down here in a little bit. It says the Bible clearly answers these questions. And exactly. The Bible does answer these questions. The first man didn't make himself. Exactly. He only came to life after Yahweh formed a man from dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Exactly. And you can find that in um you know Genesis chapter two. In verse 7, see, the Lord said he made man in his image, okay? All right? He always showed his people, and who's the Lord's people? The Israelites, okay? If anything, they're, they're the Plato of his hand, all right? The Lord created, all right, humans, all right? When Jeremiah witnessed a potter who took a spoiled lump of clay and reworked it into another vessel as it seemed as it seemed good to the potters to do the Lord Yahweh instructed him to tell his people like the clay in the potter's hand so are you in my hand see powerful man and there's a scripture Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 4 and 6 and you know what's matter of fact let's go to that Jeremiah 18 <laughs> all right so what Esau trying to do? He's trying to take God out of the picture, man. He's trying to remove Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, all right, out of the picture, all right. Yeah, right here. This is Jeremiah chapter eighteen and let me see. Let me start. Let me read this. I'm gonna. Just, I'm gonna the point. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was married, it's like was married in the hand of the potter. So so he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the pot to make it. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord Yahweh came to me saying, O house of Israel, see? The Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel, man. Point blank, period, man. He only dealing with his people, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay, all right. O house of, let's read verse five again. Verse five again. Then the word of the Lord Yahweh came to me, saying, "O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter?" All right. Wow. Verse Slug says the Lord Yahweh Shai, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, alright, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. So the Lord, hey, we belong to the Lord Yahweh Shai, man. Point blank period, man. Okay? Alright? Point blank period. Alright? The Lord Yahweh Shai created the nations of people, man. Including his special people, the Israelites, man. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Point blank. And as a matter of fact, whoo, you know what? This lines up perfectly with this scripture. Wow. That's beautiful, man. This lines up perfectly with this scripture. Okay? Um, yeah, let's get straight to the point, man. Romans 9 and verse 21. Have not the powder, powder power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto this honor. Come on, man. That lines up perfectly with this. Wow, I didn't see that, man. That's hey, hey man, that's beautiful, man. Hey, call Hanani Nani how about some young shy, man. Wow. That lines up perfectly. Let's go back, man. Hold on. I think I did I mark it? Did I? No, I didn't. Let's just go back. Jeremiah 18. Verse 4, all right, see, this lines up perfectly with Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 4 through 6, man. He made one vessel unto honor, which is the Israelites, man, okay? Let's read this again. Woo, that is beautiful. <laughs> wow, man. Hey, 
Call him late night, how about you me on shot, man? Barack Adah. Let's read this again. Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was married in the hand of the potter. That's okay. Who's the vessel? This is who's the potter. Okay. Yahweh Shai, man. Alright. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And who's that vessel? The Israelites. Come on, man. So he made it again. It's not, yeah. So he made it again. Another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then said, Slag, then the word of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai came to me saying, O house of Israel. Cannot I do with you as this potter? Come on, man. One vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor. Who's the vessel of dishonor? The Edomites. Okay? Esau, the so-called white man. Said the Lord, Yahabashin Yahushua, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I wonder what this says in the NLT, man. All right? I gotta find out what this says in the NLT. I know this. I know I'm supposed to be talking about one thing, but hey, this, <laughs> hey, that's beautiful, man. You know, sometimes the spirit will lead you in another direction. All right, let's go to, yeah, the Potter and the Clay. All right, let's read. Let's read verse four, man. Jeremiah eighteen verse four in the NLT, five six in the NLT. Okay, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he. Had hope, so he cr so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Hmm. Verse five. Then the Lord Yahweh gave me this message: O Israel, verse six. O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Point blank period, man. Wow. Beautiful. Okay. All right. That's that perfect vessel, man. Who's the perfect vessel? All right. The Israelites, man. Okay. Let's go back to verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 21. Hath not the power, potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto this honor? Yes. All right. We're that vessel of honor, man. The Israelites are. And Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right, the Edomites, all right, they're that vessel of dishonor, okay? All right? Verse 22. And what if Yahweh were willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction? Who's that vessel of wrath fitted to destruction? The Edomites, man. Point blank, period. Okay, all right. Wow, that was spiritual, man. All right, snarky. Wow. Oh. Where was I? Uh, right here. Yeah, I was right here. Let's see. Let's read down here. All right, let's get down here. It says. Opposing Christianity on each of these points is a philosophy Truman Truman calls expressive individualism, which argues that everybody is ultimately defined by an inner core of feelings that they have and authentic authenticity authenticity is found by being able to express those feelings outwardly. He explains that it applies the 19th century German philosopher Frederick Nysikter, whatever the hell that is, <laughs> name is, arg argument that if God is dead, then we effectively made ourselves God. For it's for us to create meanings back home, points out a connection to the abortion debate with the slogan my body my choice making the claim that i'm in control of myself and you're not in control of yourself man all right and that's what a lot of these women think they think they're in control of them themselves man okay but you're not hey 
hey, your body belongs to the Lord, Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Okay? All right? We, we like to think we're masters of our own destiny, and you're not. You're not the master of your own destiny. And as a matter of fact, let's get this quick scripture. Got to get it. Hold on. <laughs> let's, let's show you you're not uh, a master of your own self. You, yay. What does it tell you? What the hell? What's going on here, man? Shut up. What's going on here? Hmm. There we go. All right. Let me know what happens. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. A man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? All right. Man's goings are of the Lord. Okay. All right. The things that you do are of the Lord. How about seeing y'all shy? Okay. How can a man understand his own way, man? Okay. You don't do things on your own. There's no such thing as free will. That's what they're trying to say. All right. These people out here trying to say, all right, they got the free will to do this and do that. No, you don't, man. Let's read this again. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? You're not a, look, <laughs> you don't make your own destiny. You ain't in control of your own destiny. All right. The Lord, Yahweh about you shy controls everything. And as a matter of fact, let's get another, let's get another one. Um, I think it's Job 34 and um, where's that scripture? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, what it says, a man sells destruction. Might be 33. Yeah, huh? Yeah, here it is, right here. All right. Let's see. Uh, it's Job thirty-three and verse. Mm, I'm gonna start at verse. I'm gonna start at verse fourteen. For your house speak speaketh one, yea twice, yet man proceedeth not. Verse fifteen. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep followed upon men. And slumberings upon the bed. Then he opened it, the ears of men and said their instruction. You see? So you're not in control. You said there's no such thing as free will, man. All right? The Lord said he opens up the ears of men and said their instruction. So the Lord controls everything you do, man. All right? All right? So, hey, there you go. There's no such thing as free will. All right? That's what they're trying to say. All right? <laughs> These people out here saying, oh, Hey, there's free will. There's no such thing as free will, man. Okay? Alright? Where was I? Um, yeah, let me read this paragraph again. We like to think we're masters of our own destiny. And we just prove that you're not masters of your own destiny. Added Truman. But there is a lot of evidence that points in, other in the other direction. Exactly. He explains two disadvantages in particular. First, image... The burden placed upon a a three or four year old who asked their parents, "Who am I? Am I a boy or a girl?" And the parents say, "Well, you've got to decide that for yourself." And hey, you should already know what you are, man. Okay, no, uh, four, three or four year old child should be asking their parents that, man. Okay, no three and four year old child should even have to be asking their parents that, man. All right, that's madness. And that's the madness that's come out of this place, Babylon the Great America. All right, why? Because they believe, because people believe that they're their own gods, man. They believe they're gods themselves. They uh, ruin over themselves, man. No, you're not. Okay, that's a terrifying burden to place on a, on a child. Exactly. It is. Okay. That's why this place got to go, man. Okay? All right? I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'll put the rest of this article in the description box. All right? Let's get some scriptures, man. And I'm going to close that. You know, I ain't trying to make this long, but that's all right, though. All right? That's all right. Because, hey, <laughs> the Lord y'all about to y'all shy is about to bring judgment upon this place, man. Okay? All right? 
Let's see where I want to start. All right. This is how these people feel, man. This is Job 21 and verse 14. Therefore, they say unto Yahweh, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. And hey, hey, that's how these people feel, man. All right. That's how these people feel. All right. These people out here feel, man. These Edomites, these heathens, and two-thirds of our people. Okay? All right? They don't want to hear about the true power of Yahweh Shemiel Shai. Especially our people. All right? Hey, the Lord is for our people, man. They don't want to hear. Two-thirds of our people don't want to hear about the true power of Yahweh Shemiel Shai, man. Okay? All right? That's why a lot of folks, uh, a lot of our people are leaving the Christian church and turning into atheism and uh, what's the other thing they turn into? Uh, witchcraft and other things like that. Okay, all right. Verse fifteen. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? See, that's the attitude of these people in the world, especially here in Babylon, the Great America, man. Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. Exactly. The counsel of the wicked is far from the glory. How about she outside? Okay. Verse 17. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? Yahweh distributed his sorrows in his anger. And hey. This, hey, the wick, this wickedness of this society is about to be cut off, man. Okay. It's about to be cut off permanently. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, this is, and as a matter of fact, this goes perfectly. All right, this is uh, Psalms 119, verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statues. All right, hey, this is talking about Esau, even so called white race, man. There is no salvation, there is no mercy for the Edomite race. Okay, all right. Two thirds, there's no mercy and no salvation for them on this side. But when they come back through the laws of the elect, then hey, they're gonna have they're gonna have mercy. The Lord is gonna have mercy on all Israel in the kingdom of heaven. But on this side right now, the Lord Yahweh Shai is not dealing with two thirds of his people. All right, they're gonna be cut off and die on this side, like it tells you in Zechariah chapter thirteen, verse eight and nine. Okay, all right, but only the one third remnant is gonna be preserved. Okay, all right, let's move on. <clears throat> oh, dear. What else we got in here? Yeah, let's go here. This is Psalms chapter 10 and verse 4. The wicked, through his like through the pride of his countenance, they will not seek after Yahweh. Yahweh is not in all his thoughts. No, all right. Hey, the Lord is not in all these devil's thoughts, man. They believe that there is no God, that you can be gods over yourselves, man. Like that article say, you can you can decide whether you're a boy or a girl. You can decide whether you want to be this or you want to be that and all this madness, man. That's coming out of here in Babylon, the great America. All right. They're telling you, they tell you, you don't need God to, uh, to decide that for you. All right. Also taking... Uh, Yahweh out of the creation. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh out of the creation. When the, when the scriptures plainly tell you that the Lord said, let us make men in our image. Okay? All right? Hey. The Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh made man. All right? He created man, and then he created woman. Point blank period, man. All right? Let's move on. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. This is Romans 3 and verse 13. Their throat is an open sector. With their tongues, they have used to see the poison of apps is under their lips. Verse 14. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Who's this talking about? Esau, the so-called white man. Verse 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Verse 16. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. Verse 18, there is no fear of Yahweh before their eyes. These people don't fear Yahweh by Shem Yahshai, man. These Edomites, not two-thirds, even including two-thirds of our people, because they follow the ways of the wicked, man, all right? And following the ways of the wicked is only going to get your ass destroyed, okay? 
point blank period. All right, this is Habakkuk 1 and 4. Therefore, the law is snack and judgment doeth never go forth. There's no judgment in this place, man. There's no judgment throughout the world, man. This whole world, this whole earth is wax gross in darkness, man. Like it tells you in uh, Isaiah the, I'm not just going to get it, man. Let's read this first. Habakkuk 1 and 4. Therefore, the law is snack and judgment doeth never go forth. For the wicked do compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Okay? Wrong judgment proceedeth, man. All right? Where's that scripture at? I just quoted it, man. Um, damn, I just quoted it, man. I never got that quick. Oh, wow. Um, come on, come on, come on. I got it now. Lock you. All right? Yeah, right here. Con, all right. Just remember, it just came back to me, man. Call him all you know, you How about me outside, man? We gotta get the hell up out of this place, man. My goodness. Whew. Isaiah 60 and verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. All right. This whole earth is wax gross in gross darkness, man. Full of abomination. Full of wicked philosophies, man. The philosophies of men. Esau, even the so-called white man. This place got to go. My goodness gracious, man. All right. But the glory of Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. All right. So, hey, light is being shed, man. All right. Righteousness. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to that scripture. Psalms 85 and verse 11. All right. This is what's happening now. The earth is returning back to its rightful order. All right. Ain't going back to its complete rightful order yet. But we are seeing glimpses of, hey, this earth is being turned back to its rightful order, man. Okay. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. Through this word going out by the men of the Lord, the prophets. Psalms 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. And you're seeing that now, man. Okay. All right, you're seeing a little bit of that. But, hey, we're still under the rulership of Esau, even the so-called white man. But, hey, his rulership is coming to an end. This is Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. To the chief musician, a song of David. The fool has said in his heart, which means his mind, there is no God. Who says that? Esau, even the so-called white man. That's why they gave your ass evolution. That's why they tell you that you evolved from monkeys and you came from monkeys and bullshit. All of that damn madness that they teach in school, man. That's not true. Okay? That's far from the truth. But this is what, hey, this is what Esau even says, man. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. That's Esau even so-called white man. To the T. Okay? All right, uh, let's see. Let's read verse 2. The Lord Yahweh shall shall look down from heaven upon the children of men. Who's the children of men? Okay, the Edomites. To see if there were any that didn't understand and seek Yahweh. You know, he's God. And like I said, he's God. Hey, the Lord is, hey, the Lord ain't really dealing with these devils, man. He's not dealing with these devils. Okay, they're not going to seek the Lord. Okay. The Lord is not in all their thoughts. Verse uh, 3. They are gone. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity have no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. You know Verse 5. There were, there were they in great fear. For Yahweh is in the generation of the righteous, all right? And who's the righteous? The elect, man, okay? And the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is about to destroy this place. As a matter of fact, let me get, let me just, let me get about, yeah, let's read this. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 18 19, all right? Or if they die quickly, they have no hope. Neither comfort in the day of trial. For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. The end. 
the end of the unrighteous generation is about to happen, man. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob's the beginning of it that follows, man. Uh, I ain't gonna have time to read all of these, man. Uh, let's just, let's get two more, then I'm gonna close it out. All right, Proverbs three and verse thirty-three: The curse of the Lord Yahweh is in the house of the wicked, but He blesseth the habitation of the just. Okay, all right. He's blessing the habitation of the just. Who's the just? The Israelites, man. Okay. Let's read this. Job uh, 20 and verse 5. Let me get this straight to the point. That the triumphing of the wicked is short in the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They that which have seen him shall say, where is he? Yeah. When the wicked is put down, Esau Eden is put down, okay? Hey, that's what they're going to say. Where is he? All right? Verse 8, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Verse 9, the eyes also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. So, hey, Esau Eden is about to be taken out of power, man. Okay? All right? Yeah, let's get this, and I'm going to close it out. All right, Psalms 9 and verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. All right, hell is a condition, man, and they're going into a hellish condition. Slavery on earth. The hell, <laughs> they hell is about to become, hey, their hell is about to become our hell, man. What we went through, they're about to go through it. Lamentations 4, 21 says, Rejoice me, glad, O daughter, eat them. Okay, all right. And all the nations that forget Yahweh, all the nations, the heathen nations, including two thirds of our people, the nation of Israel, two thirds of our people that forgot Yahweh about Shemuel Shah. All right. So, hey, the MyCBM Nukem is about to come and destroy this wicked ass queendom. And, hey, that's going to be the end of that. All right. So, I'm going to end it here, man. I ain't intend this lesson to go on that long that I did. All right. Let me see. Let me check one more precept out. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't be the dead horse, man. I'm gonna end it here. So, Lord, when I pray, this was edifying. Call him, love you, love you, how about you, shy about you, and cock a dash, double lunch to the elderly apostles, a great millstone who will. Peace, blessings, and citations go to the whole from that they're scattered abroad. See you with another lesson soon, Lord. One, Kwame, Yash, Raw, Sean, one, Wild, Baba, Ball, about one, DTL, Baba, Ball. Boom! Sean, one, till next time. Sean, one.